Welcome to the MD Edge Daily News for Tuesday, July 10th. I'm Nick Andrews. And I'm Mary Ellen Schneider. Today, adding NSAIDs to a TNF inhibitor slows ankylosing spondylitis. And chronic kidney disease is more common in type 2 diabetes than type 1. Plus, laws that promote drug price transparency are gaining ground across the country. But we begin with new sleep medicine data. Multiple studies based on phase 3 clinical trials of solreamphetol show the investigational drug may improve next day wakefulness and work productivity in people with narcolepsy and obstructive sleep apnea. The drug can maintain its effect throughout the day as well as for up to six months. This is according to a report presented at the annual meeting of the Associated Professional Sleep Societies. The drug was the subject of four different studies that drilled down into its effect on specific aspects of narcolepsy or obstructive sleep apnea or both. One study explored results in narcoleptic patients with and without cataplexy. Another investigated maintenance of efficacy after six months, while a third study looked at the drug's impact on next day function, work productivity, and quality of life in patients with narcolepsy. And researchers also assessed how solreamphetol helped maintain wakefulness throughout the day. Dr. Helene Emsalim led the study on how solreamphetol could impact daily activity in patients with narcolepsy. She and her colleagues report that at 300 milligrams, solreamphetol reduced activity impairment outside the workplace, and at half of that dose, the drug reduced activity and work impairment from baseline to 12 weeks on the measures of functionality at work and in private life. Adverse events appeared similar across all treatment groups in all four studies, with the most common being headache. When combined with a TNF inhibitor, NSAIDs provide protection against long-term radiographic progression in patients with ankylosing spondylitis. That finding is based on data from more than 500 patients and was presented at the annual European Congress of Rheumatology. Patients who received a TNF inhibitor with NSAIDs experienced four-year protection against radiographic progression as measured with the modified stroke ankylosing spondylitis spine score. That's compared to patients who received a TNF inhibitor alone. The protection associated with celecoxib was significant at two years and was greater than adding non-selective NSAIDs at four years. The researchers report that at two years, the difference was not significant, but at four years, the median score was more than one point lower with low-dose NSAIDs and more than three points lower with high-dose NSAIDs. Dr. Leanne Gensler says that one key takeaway from the findings is that not all NSAIDs are alike. Despite this fact, Dr. Gensler said she chooses to treat patients based on symptoms and disease activity first, but she plans to be more selective when choosing an NSAID when feasible. And chronic kidney disease is much more common in patients with type 2 diabetes than in patients with type 1 diabetes. This is according to new data presented at the 2018 annual meeting of the American Diabetes Association. The researchers report that 44% of patients with type 2 had kidney disease, compared with 32% of patients with type 1. The research also shows more evidence that albumin testing can provide crucial warning signs of future kidney trouble. Dr. Michael Cressman of Covance says that these data suggest that there's a lot more EGFR testing than there is albumin testing. Dr. Cressman spoke with MD Edge reporter Randy Dotinga at ADA 2018. From an overall perspective, my most important take home was that it is very important to measure albumin in the urine in order to identify the patients who are are at highest risk of progressive renal disease. To me, that is important because there you identify people who you really want to maximize all the available treatments. And finally today, 
Connecticut is the latest state to enact a so-called drug price transparency law that imposes reporting requirements on drug makers, health insurers, and pharmacy benefit managers. The new requirements call on drug makers to provide information about significant drug cost increases, including the drivers behind the price hikes and information on development costs and capital spending. For their part, pharmacy benefit managers must report the volume of formulary rebates received from drug makers, including the portion provided to insurers. Kevin Lembo is Connecticut comptroller. He says the law is groundbreaking, exposing the -the behind-the-scenes wealth exchange between large drug companies, pharmacy benefit managers, and health plans. At least seven other states have passed similar laws that aim to expose questionable medication pricing and compel drug makers to provide the reasoning behind their cost decisions. Between 2016 and 2018, drug price transparency laws were enacted in California, Louisiana, Nevada, New York, Oregon, Maryland, and Vermont. Maine, meanwhile, has enacted legislation that requires the development of a plan to collect data from manufacturers. And that concludes the Tuesday edition of the MD Edge Daily News. You can find links to these stories in the podcast description. I'm Mary Ellen Schneider. And I'm Nick Andrews. You can make the MD Edge Daily News a part of your routine. Subscribe wherever podcasts are found.